Looking at the statistics last year, Sunderland was bottom of the league with 5% of people um, having learned disabilities in general practice. And I think because of the relationship that I have personally with practice managers, and we've got our five localities, five locality practice managers who supported me in this as well, um, we've now got the 53 practices signed up for um, offering learned disabilities to now not just to the over 18 year olds, but to the over 14 year olds as well. So we've moved from 5%, bottom of the league, up to 50.2%. Reaching the point that we are at, we had a very good uh, foundation to start with because of the long-standing partnership working that, uh, that has, um, um, has been there in Sunderland for, for many, many years. Um, and the stability of some of the workforce, uh, some of us have been around a long time. Um, but the approach has been to work in partnership. Someone else mentioned one team working, which I think is probably a good way to describe it. But in a very uh, personalised way, the focus is on, on getting the best outcomes for the individual as possible. We all have to work in our bureaucracies. We all have protocols and systems that we have to adhere to. But people genuinely are trying to use those systems, work those protocols, so that the individuals and their families uh, get a better quality of life and get the right quality of life in the right uh, accommodation. Um, visibility is another issue I'd want to mention. Uh, I, I feel that as the local commissioner for learning disabilities, I have high visibility uh, in terms of the organisations and in terms of the individuals who are in hospital and, and their families and their advocates. I'm very keen to, to be seen. Um, I think that goes as well for, for my partners in the local authority and in the Mental Health Trust. We, um, I can give an example of that where we, we had a, a CPA, which is a, a mental health meeting for an individual last week. And uh, I was at that meeting my local authority colleague, who's a, a social work, uh, senior social worker, was there. Uh, our learning disabilities nurse that works with the local authority was there, and I think it demonstrated to the staff of the hospital, to the to mum who was there, and the and the individual, uh, the, the the patient, the client, that we were all trying to achieve the best outcome together. Uh, there was no. Uh, differences uh, we were working together now they, the individual and the family member may not have known really who we worked for but what they saw was that we were working together and after the meeting that's what the consultant psychiatrist said that she was uh, very pleased with the fact that the organizations in Sunderland were all represented and were all demonstrating uh, team working a big part of my job is providing assurances to various organisations. I'll go and report to anybody who wants to listen about uh, transforming care and learning disability services. But I do have um, a responsibility to report to the Health and Wellbeing Board, to the Learning Disabilities Partnership Board, to the Clinical Commissioning Group uh, Assurance uh, Bodies, which is the Quality, Safety and Risk Committee, um, to the Learning Disabilities Partnership Board, to the adult and children's safeguarding boards. As I say, I'll, I'll go anywhere I'm invited to talk about land and disabilities. But what, what I, I tell those groups, those boards, is that we are meeting the objectives that we have to meet within Sunderland. We are meeting government and NHS England's deadlines and requirements. And uh, the way in which we're doing it is the best way for the people of Sunderland. We have formal agreements between the CCG and the local authority, but we also have very informal ways of working too. Uh, a couple of um, posts that we have that we jointly fund between the local authority and the CCG is that we have a, a learning disabilities nurse who's employed by the Mental Health Trust, our main health provider uh, for learning disabilities. But he's seconded four days a week to the local authority, which is a really excellent way of, of working. I could recommend that because um, he sits with the social work team, with the people in the local authority that are responsible for finding accommodation, and he can provide a clinical 
input to those arrangements. He works very closely with me, uh, so that's a, a benefit to the, uh, to the CCG. Uh, the other post that we have is a, a hospital liaison nurse, again funded by both the local authority and the CCG, and she does an excellent um, job in terms of uh, working with the acute trust to deal with the general health issues of people with land disabilities and their carers, because that's important too. People uh, need sometimes to go into specialist hospitals for their mental health needs, but they also need to go into acute hospitals for their, for their general health. Uh, we are part of a regional network, uh, so in the northeast we have a, a regular meeting with other areas, other CCGs, local authorities and other organisations, which is, is a good way of sharing good practice, of sharing information and raising issues that some of us are struggling with and, and there's a peer group there to, to help us find solutions. One area where I think we need to do some more work, because we would readily admit that we are not perfect and we haven't absolutely captured everything, is young people coming through transition. I think we have to review our arrangements and probably improve upon them. You can always improve on, on our, your arrangements. And make sure that those young people are able to receive good services when they trans, when they move into uh, being an adult in both hospital terms and in the, in the community too. So we need to work even better uh, between the local authority, the education authorities and the CCG. So we think about what else I want to One of the uh, other areas where we think we've made a lot of progress is the sharing of information. Now, we all know that that's a difficulty nationally in terms of patient identifiable information, but we do have a shared databases between ourselves, our providers, uh, between the local authority and the CCG, and, and that has to happen for oper operational reasons to make sure that, uh, that the operational clinicians and social workers are uh, working with the same information and that people and their families are not asked for the same information many, many times. Uh, the sharing of information is essential to providing good services and uh, we think that we are, we've kind of cracked that because I think we needed to. We've also got good relationships with our forensic colleagues, our, um, the people who deal with the, the people who have got um, are in forensic services and need specialist services there, so we have regular meetings with our case managers and that, that's proved very valuable in preparing for people who uh, at some stage will be moving back to Sunderland into the community or indeed even moving back to our uh, treatment services. It's very important to involve families uh, in all of the arrangements, carers, uh, as well as people with learned disabilities who can represent other people with learning disabilities. So in terms of our project board, we ensure that those groups were in right at the beginning of the project board. It's essential that they are equal partners, I've got an equal say, and I've got the right to ask me the same awkward questions, in fact even better awkward questions, than my uh, paid colleagues can do. Is there anything about um, uh, how you how you feel the the ways you're working with your partners has actually prevented people from having to be treated um, in a hospital setting? So you're actually proactively spotting where people might have um, care needs and and making sure that that care package outside of hospital is, yeah. is as good as it um, needs to be. Yeah, we've um, we've invested in recent years in the community services. Um, the community learning disabilities team. Um, we've got a, we're quite proud of this, we've got a forensic outreach team uh, service, a clinic that uh, social workers and others can go to for advice and, and to discuss particular um, clients. Um, 
What was the question again? What was the second part to that? Um, has it stopped people yeah, having to yes. go into it? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> Yeah, we can, um, if you remember later, we can do it off camera. <laughs> it doesn't all have to be on camera, so... <laughs> Some of the things we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, where it is, it is important to um, work hard so that people don't need to go into hospital. Uh, but you, you do need then uh, investment in community services. Um, we work very hard with our uh, providers as well to ensure that people get uh, a, a tailored service to their needs. So if someone, um, and we, we try and make sure that people move into their own tenancies. If they want to go back to their family home, that would be even better, or to the living accommodation that they had previous to going into hospital. But it's important that staff are very much aware of what the person's needs are. So there is a transition there between hospital and, and the community where the support team within the, the locality uh, has to work with the ward staff to, to gain good um, uh, intelligence on the individual and to meet the individual and to work with them and sometimes if an individual has particular hobbies or or um, interests it's important to match some of the staff to those interests so if someone's interested in going to the gym quite a lot uh, it'd be useful if a couple of members of staff were also interested in, in heavy exercise and going to the gym uh, that would that would provide an even better quality of life for the individual and was there something as well about <coughs> in the open and transparent relationship that the CCG has with the local authority around the way uh, some of what might be called the perverse incentives around finance are addressed? So, okay. in terms of keeping people out of hospital or...? Yeah, I mean, there are perverse and financial incentives in the system. Uh, perhaps I shouldn't reveal them, maybe some other areas might not have thought of this. <laughs> but, uh, again, within Sunderland, we, we do... We have a very trustful working relationship and we recognise that if, if someone's in hospital uh, on a section under the Mental Health Act and, and are then discharged, they are usually discharged with an aftercare support package. In Sunderland what we do is we, we share that package 50-50, so there's a cost to the local authority and the CCG. If someone's living in the community, the perverse incentive for the local authority would be for them not to go into hospital, but because of their high mental or physical needs for them to be referred for continuing health care, in which case the CCG will be responsible to fund their, their package 100%. Now, I'm sure that local authority do not do that. I'm sure that the CCG would certainly not want people to go into hospital to share their costs when they're discharged. But unfortunately, <coughs> there, is, there is those uh, glitches in the system that, that don't help and in some areas may actually cause problems. <laughs>